Good morning and welcome back. Today we're going to dive into Daniel chapter 9 and go ahead and read all the way through. Um, I'm going to open up in a bit of prayer. Father God, I pray for peace in the world. Comfort the innocent and soften the hearts of those causing war. I pray for our leaders in office. May they make good decisions and promote life and restoration. Peace and strength to those suffering. We put at your feet the issues of droughts in the world, hunger in the world, energy conservation, and the overall health of the society. May we get back to where we should be in faith. We give thanks to you, Lord. Calm our hearts and our minds and our spirit as we spend time in your word. May we be able to receive and understand it so that we may be able to share with others. Amen. Please, if you'd like to talk, pray, or just to chat about anything that's come up in any of these readings that I got by Juan Adeo, please uh, leave me a comment. Um, I would love to talk more about it. If there's anything that you would like to enlighten me with, I welcome it. And of course, if you just want to talk about something that I messed up on, I welcome that too. <laughs> so Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord, given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and I pleaded with him in prayer and petition and fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who have spoken your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all the disaster has come on us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. Lord, the Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. I'm guilty of this very much. So. That's why I'm agreeing in all these sounds. I'm sorry, so animated sometimes. Verse 15. Now, Lord, our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and the petitions of your servant for your sake, Lord, look with favor on your des desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make request of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. The 77s, verse 20. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of 
my people, Israel, and making my request to the Lord, my God, for his holy hill. While I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in a swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Amen. No one understand this from the time the word goes out and to restore and rebuild Jerusalem into the anointed one. The ruler comes. There will be 70 sevens and 62 sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench. But in times of trouble, after the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have nothing the people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolation have been decreed. He will confirm a covenant with many <clears throat> for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Chapter 10, Daniel's Vision of a Man. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At the time I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks, I ate no choice food, no meat or wine, touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Upez around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it. But such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. I'm just going to say we know that God will only show himself sometimes to only those that can see and hear. Those that are in relation. While others, when you look around, might not get anything. Um, have peace that those that should hear and see will and the Lord will cover them. Verse 8. So I was left alone gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. There are many wars fighting over this, what Daniel and the people were going through. So now there were two angels, Gabriel and Michael. Now I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground, and I was speechless. Then one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed. He said, peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak my Lord since you have given me strength. So he said, do you know why I have come to you? 
So when I will, will return to the fight against the Prince of Persia, and when I go, the Prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the Book of Truth. No one supports me against them except Michael. <clears throat> Chapter 11. Your Prince, and in the first year of Darius, the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. The King of the South and North. Now then I tell you the truth. Three more kings will rise in Persia, and then a fourth who will be far richer than all the others. When he has gained power by his wealth, he will stir up everyone against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king will arise who will rule with great power and do as he pleases. After he has risen, his empire will be broken up and parceled out toward the four winds of heaven. It will not go to his descendants, nor will it have the power he exercised, because his empire will be uprooted and given to others. The king of the south will be will become strong, but one of his commanders will become even stronger than he and will rule his own kingdom with great power. After some years, they will become allies. The daughter of the king of the south will go to the king of the north to make an alliance, but she will not retain her power, and he and his power will not last. In those days, she will be betrayed, together with her royal escort and her father, and the one who supported her. <clears throat> one from her family line will arise to take her place. He will attack the forces of the king of the north and enter his fortress. His fight, his will, I'm so sorry, he will fight against them and be victorious. He will also seize their gods, their metal images, and their valuable articles of silver and gold and carry them off to Egypt. Excuse me. <clears throat> There is a lot going on here, so I hope that you can follow and then we can always go back on our own, right? I mean, for some years, he will leave the king in the north alone. Let me start back at verse 8. He will also seize their gods, their metal images, and their valuable articles of silver and gold and carry them off to Egypt. For, seven, for some years, he will leave the king of the north alone. Then the king of the north will invade the realm of the king of the south but will retreat, retreat to his own country. His sons will prepare for war and assemble a great army, which will sweep on like an irresistible flood and carry the battle as far as his fortress. Then the king of the south will march out in a rage and fight against the king of the north, who will raise a large army, but it will be defeated when the army is carried off. The king of the south will be filled with pride and will slaughter many thousands, yet he will not remain triumphant. For the king of the north will muster another army larger than the first, and after several years, he will advance with a huge army fully equipped. In those times, many will rise against the king of the south. Those who are violent amongst your own people will rebel in fulfillment of the vision, but without success. Then the king of the north will come and build up siege ramps and will capture a fortified city. The forces of the south will be powerless to resist. Even their boost, tr best troops will not have the strength to stand. The invader will do as he pleases. No one will be able to stand against him. He will establish himself in the beautiful land and will have power to destroy it. He will determine to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will make an alliance with the king of the south. And he will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom but his plans will not succeed or help him. Then he will turn his attention to the coastlands and will take many of them, but a commander will put an end to his insolence and will turn his insolence back on him. After this, he will turn back toward the fortress of his own country, but will stumble and fall to be seen no more. So he'll be taken out. His successor will send out a tax collector to maintain the royal splendor. In a few years, however, he will be destroyed, yet not in anger or in battle. He will be succeeded by a contemptible person who has not been given the honor of royalty. He will invade the kingdom when its people feel secure, and he will seize it through intrigue. Then an overwhelming army will be swept away before him. Both it and a prince of the covenant will be destroyed. After coming to an agreement with him, he will act deceitfully, and with only a few people, he will rise to power. 
When the richest provinces feel secure, he will invade them and will achieve what neither his fathers nor his forefathers did. He will distribute plunder, loot, and wealth amongst his followers. He will plot the overthrow of fortresses, but only for a time. With a large army, he will stir up his strength and courage against the king of the south. The king of the south will wage war with a large and very powerful army, but he will not be able to stand because of the plots devised against him. Those who eat <clears throat> from the king's provisions will try to destroy him. His army will be swept away, and many will fall in battle. The two kings, with their hearts bent on evil, will, set, will sit at the same table and lie to each other, but to no avail, because an end will come at the appointed time. The king of the north will return to his own country with great wealth, but his heart will be set against the holy covenant. He will take action against it and then return to his own country. <clears throat> this is difficult to get through in one reading, so we're pushing through. Thank you, you're still hanging on. At the appointed time, he will invade the south again, but this time the outcome will be different from what it was before. Ships of the western coastlands will oppose him and he won't lose heart. Then he will turn back and vent his fury against the Holy Covenant he will return and show favor to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. His armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation. With flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will firmly resist him. Those who are wise will instruct many. Though for a time they will fall by the sword or be burned or captured or plundered. When they fall, they will receive a little heap and many who are not sincere will join them. Some of the wise will stumble so that many will, may be refined, purified and made spotless until the time of the end. For it will still come at the appointed time. The king who exalts himself. Verse 36. The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and will say unheard of things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what he has, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the one desired by women, nor will he regard any god, but will exalt himself above them all. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortress a god unknown to his ancestors he will honor with gold and silver with precious stones and costly gifts he will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign god and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him he will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price at the time of the end the king of the south will engage him in battle and the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of ships, he will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from their hand. He will extend his power over many countries. Egypt will not escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver and all the riches of Egypt, with the Libyans and the Cushites in submission. But reports from the east and the north will alarm him, and he will set out in great rage to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain, yet he will come to his end, and no one will help him. The End Times, Chapter 12 At the time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress. Such has not happened from the beginning of nation until the end. But at the time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood 
two others, one on his bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, how long will it be before this, these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and in his hand and his left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever saying, it will be for a time, times a half a time, when the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked my Lord, what will the outcome of, of all this be? He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for, for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. That was the book of Daniel. And that is a lot to take in. But I pray we take heart that you are blessed. And that whenever you feel pulled to dive into his word, that the Lord leads you to where you need to be. May you be in relationship with him. And may you have peace. Take care. Bye.